Computer upgrade time. I'm going to be walking you through my journey in adding a high speed, high capacity storage to my Mac Pro here so that when I film these videos or photograph an event, I can put everything onto the Mac Pro and start editing really quickly without any delays. But before we do that, I'd like to thank you all of you who have helped us reach this 10,000 subscriber mark. This is a big milestone and I have been waiting for this moment for quite some time. So thank you so much for subscribing, watching the content, and also learning along with me about color management, all these tech things that I know that I like to share with you guys, these knowledge that I have. I have been responding to all of your questions in the comments and on any comments that comes by way, whatever that may be. And if you have any suggestions for a future video, feel free to leave them in the comments. You never know, I might actually pick your topic and make the next video out of it. So, but for now, let's jump in and talk about the expansion card that I got from my Mac Pro. This video is going to be about the Sonnet M.2 4x4 PCIe card, which is the one that I have in my hand here. Let's get started. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So for this setup, I have my Mac Pro. And I understand that Apple is still in the transition process to the Apple Silicon M1 processor that we have out so far and newer ones that are coming later on this year. But yet they don't have anything that is modular like this. I can go in and add cards and add high speed storage to my heart content the way how I want to do here. And doing so while not obstructing or using any additional USB ports that's on the computer or the finite one that comes with Apple computer, right? So. This is a good way of doing so. Like I mentioned before, this is going to be a coverage for the Sonnet M.2 4x4 PCIe card. And this happens to be their second generation. If you notice here in the picture, this one doesn't have a fan there. Their first generation does have a fan. And it's interesting because I was searching this online and I was looking at the first generation one and it says it's discontinued. So I got worried for a second there like, oh shoot, what's really going on? But apparently they upgraded to a new one without the fan. So these cards, it's a PIE that goes into one of the slots inside the Mac Pro. And the nice part about it, I can put up to four NVMe cards inside. And that makes it for a super high speed and super fast storage, depending on the NVMe you want to put in. So for these, I'll be using the Samsung 970 EVO. And I'm covering the memory size here just because these say 500. But inside these, I replaced them from the memory inside my Synology NAS, where they put a two terabyte SSD or NVMe in there. By the way, on the Synology NAS, I'll make a video about that, but you don't really need that much um, SSD caching. So going with a smaller size NVMe card will work just fine. But anyway, these are two terabyte NVMe cards, Samsung 970 EVO Plus, which is the one that I have in the Synology, and I'll be provisioning these cards and I'll be putting them in here. I only have two, so I'm only, only going to populate these two slots here. There's four, I can always upgrade it in the future. Um, and then from here, what we're going to do is plug into our Mac Pro, set it up and go through the RAID setup a little bit so that we can pair them together and get super high speed storage. But let's first unbox this. So with this, we get pretty much in an anti-static bag, the card with an attention thing, sticker that we should be careful. So I'll leave this on here and this is pretty much the card that we're looking at. There we go. So it's a pretty much simple card. I mean, I wish that because they're not using the space for the fan anymore, that instead of using the same like huge PCB, they would just cut it down a little bit and make it a little bit shorter. But I mean, this works too. We got some thermal pads. These are fairly heavy and they help dissipate heat from the NVMe because NVMe when is really reading writing, it can run really hot. So these are thermal pads for that. And we got a little manual on how to set this up. Quick start guide, little instructions, and we'll go through that. All right, so put this onto the side. And I also have my iFixit tool, which is the standard kit that I use all the time for any type of repair or anything that I do with computers. This tends to work really well. I also have their big, uh, bigger kit too, but this will work for what I'm about to do here just fine. So let's start populating things. Um, and like most people, I never read the manual, so that's great, right? Not really. So we'll do that and what I'm going to do is use this pad as I mentioned earlier to cover this portion here that are away from the center. There we 
There you go. And this should be good for our two NVMEs that we have so far. Everything seems good, seems to be sandwiching pretty well. Let's screw this back in and then we'll plug in the Mac Pro and run this quick setup on here. All right, so this is in pretty tight now. We're going to turn this and plug this into our Mac Pro. And I'll probably plug it into one of the 16 uh, X slot, which is slot number five right there. Just as an FYI, I can also plug into this one, but this one is X uh, eight times speed. So we're gonna put into the 16 X PCIe so that it can utilize the full speed of here. And also the other thing too, is I have the Apricon um, Marvel card installed here. This one has two SSDs that are set up as a hardware RAID zero. So uh, that's in there, but you have to provision that card with a PC is kind of a pain. With this one, what I'm going to do is just use the Mac software RAID and we're just going to install that in. So on a Mac Pro, installing a card, pretty easy. We're just gonna release these little cap here. Find the card. Oh, and then we're gonna pull the little thing out for the PCIe cover thing. These are really cool. They're a custom CNC aluminum piece. I mean, they're just bizarre what's in this machine. All right. So yes, I mentioned they should have cut the card a little bit shorter, which they could have, but the nice part about this is that it's also slot into the Mac Pro, creating extra support on the other end. So it's just kind of interesting there, the way how they have this engineered and designed this, which is, you know, it works as well. And we'll also unlock the card thing because there is a lock inside here that if you don't unlock it, you can't put the card in. And this is prevent like cards moving and those kind of things. So they engineered this Mac Pro really well. Okay, that's in. We're gonna lock the PCIe card in and also we're gonna put this cover back on. All right, so now the card's in there. We're gonna power this Mac Pro up or put the cover on, power this Mac Pro up and then run some software setup. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna jump back here in just a sec. All right, so now I'm back into Mac OS. Let's get the NVMe set up. So normally when you boot this up the first time, it will tell you that the disk hasn't been initialized. It's not showing up because I'm refilming this portion because there were some issues with the footage that I have both on the screen capture and the video. So here we're doing it again. So it doesn't pop up this time, but what we're gonna do here is just launch this utility. So once you pull up this utility, we can see that there's an unlocated or uninitialized this one um, and then this two right there. So what I'm simply gonna do first is let's go and erase this. And I'll erase this to Mac HFS plus or journal. And we'll call this one test for now or single test. And what I'm simply gonna do here is just show you the speed that we're able to get with just one NVMe using the Sonnet drive. It's gonna ask us if we wanna use it for time machine, say no. We have the single test ready to go. Let's call up Blackmagic this speed test. So we are going to select the target drive, which is going to be the single test drive right there. Open this up and let's give this a roll. So right now on a single drive, we're getting the write close to 3000 megabyte per second and then the read at around 3000 as well. So just like maybe a meg short of 3000 on the right. And then on the read itself, you know, we're still reading that about like 3000 each. So this is not bad at all considering the speed that we can get here. Now, what we're gonna do is pull this to the side and let's jump right back into this utility. So rather than doing just a single drive, what I'm going to do is rate these together. And the more drive you rate together, generally the higher speed you can get. Right now I only have two, two terabytes in there. So my speeds can be somewhat limited by close to around what these two drive can do in combination with some system overhead. To set up a rate in this utility, you would go into file, RAID Assistant. And this is where it would ask you the question like, what type of RAID do you want to set up? Right now, what I'm going to do is Stripe, which is RAID 0. Pretty much that means the two drive are working together in unison, meaning that if one drive fails, pretty much I lose all my data. But the way how I'm going to have this set up is that I'll use Carbon Copy Cloner, and then I will do a daily backup routine so that everything on the drive is back up at the end of the night every single day. So. I'm not really quite as worried about that just because of the robust system that I have for backup. 
Now, if you don't have those kind of things set up, if you don't have a NAS with 10 gigabit and you're going to have to transfer a lot of data, I would probably do either mirrored or something like that. You Amazingly enough, you can also do concatenated, which is like JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of this, which for this card, what you can simply do is just format each drive independently, similar to what I've done earlier. But we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna go stripe rate zero, click on next. And this is asking me which drive do I want to combine together. So what I'm gonna do is combine the two Samsung 970 EVO. And it tells you the type of connection as well as the size. So I'm gonna do the PCIe Express there. That's good, I'll click on next. And this is where it's asking me to give a name. I'll call this one four terabyte fast because it's gonna be fast and it's four terabyte. Mac OS extended journal, that's fine. RAID zero, capacity four. And this is asking me for the chunk size. In general, you want the chunk size to be the largest possible, um, especially when you're going to store a lot of files like the way how I am, which is mostly gonna be videos and also photo files. You want it to be larger. What that really means is that the smallest file size it can write, even if something is small and that is going to use 256. On Mac OS, you can do a larger chunk, for example, 4K or something like that. But what you have to do then is go in and use a command line. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to simply use the largest one that I have for me to choose here, which is 256K. And I'll click on next. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? This is going to create and erase all those disks. So I will say on create. And now it's going to build the whole thing up, set it up as a RAID. I'm ready to go. It's pretty fast. This is software RAID. So obviously there's going to be some overhead on the software side and everything. It says RAID created successfully. If you go into this utility now, you can see at the moment I click on the disk. I mean, it just shows the disk itself. If I click on that, it says it is a member of a RAID and it is online right now. Pretty much just empty, but let's run a test and see how fast this is. So select target drive again. And what I'm simply gonna do now is choose 4TB fast. Let's open this up and let's start a test. And by the way, I'm running this test using the five gigabyte uh, stress test here. So fairly large files, let's see what I can get. Around 5,200 megabytes per second. This is actually pretty good. I mean, as I mentioned, when you start to bring these together, yes, you can technically run it around 3,000 each. So two, you're supposed to be getting around 6,000. But when you're running this in array, there's always system overhead. So this is still, Really good performance. I'm getting 5,194 for write and then 5,219 for read. This is really fast and will pretty much adequately uh, make me really happy with the speed overall. Okay, let's close this out. So I have some files that I have on the local system. Right now, this is pretty much stored on the Apple internal SSD on the system here. And what I'm gonna do is copy this over to the four terabyte fast and let's see how fast this is going to go. So pretty much what I'll do now is there's a folder here. This is the moon. This is pretty much some uh, moon pictures. These are individual photos. And then the other folder here is 148 gigabytes of video files. So I'm going to just drag this over. And right now it's starting out. So it's going really fast. We're transferring this thing at around, let's see, 3.1 gigabytes per second. I mean, that is super, super fast. 3.1 gigabytes per second writing back to that card. This is pretty much just literally saturating the entire thing. And you're gonna find out that this is gonna finish soon. This is about 150 something gigabytes of data right now that's being copied over super fast to this NVMe SSE that I have set up as RAID. Now, the only downside to not populating a card right now is that down the road, if I want to group, if I add two more NVMe SSDs of like the same variety and I want to group them together, well, I have to pretty much break down the RAID first before I can um, pretty much combine them all together. So that would be the one side of the thing is finding the backup for that. Or what I can simply do is set up as two separate um, RAID systems. So one would just be these two blade and another one would be on two separate blades. So there's different ways of approaching this. So anyhow, this is going to be a really fast, high capacity storage pool system that I have inside my Mac Pro. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.